Hi, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Chad, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about my floating camera rig for the Rotorbone series. All the parts are pretty easy to find and you should be able to build this on your own. It does a really great job of stabilizing jerky movements and it also absorbs the uh, fine uh, vibrations you get from unbalanced props. Now you do want to balance your props as the best you can, but a lot of times you just can't remove all the vibrations, so something like this will help. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna angle the camera slightly to one side and what it's going to do is you'll hopefully be able to see if there's any vibration in the arm and the camera you'll see how it's moving separately and it's actually floating how it's designed is we have the camera and the battery here on this whole floating rig and what that does is keeps hopefully some mass separated from the rest of the frame and isolates the vibrations so let's give it a try and uh, see what happens All right, so what's happening is you're seeing the movement of the frame here. You see the vibrations and the, and the movement of the airframe. And the camera is mounted on a separate floating rig that absorbs a lot of that, or most of it. So what happens is you get a, a fairly smooth image here and you don't get that jello effect. See, there's a lot of movement there and it's, the camera's still holding pretty steady. So all this movement you see on the arm is what would normally transfer to the camera if it was hard mounted right to the body. Okay, so the other day I got this idea. I really wanted to use galvanized steel cable because it's so stiff yet it absorbs vibrations and I know I've seen other dampening systems use it. So these are some of the first designs that I did. I tried some different methods. I even tried bending it and you know, it, it actually works pretty well. But here's what I ended up with to this point. So you guys feel free to improve upon this, but it's just the galvanized steel cable. And I use the battery plate that comes with the Anycopter as part of the rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to build it. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is you get a hold of the battery plate. Now you're not gonna ruin this. It's just, instead of strapping the battery right to it, we're gonna use this to hold the dampening rig. Now, I think this is about 15 inches is what I ended up cutting here. First thing we're going to do is take the galvanized steel cable and we're going to wrap it through here. But I'm going to mark this as up. That means that's the part that goes against the Anycopter bottom plate. The reason is, is when it, the first time I did this I ended up wrapping it wrong because I, I forgot which way was up. With this up you want to feed it down and then up through the next battery strap hole. Then loop it around and you're going to go down and then back up. So, and then what we're gonna do, let's just pull it tighter now so we have this slack here, and then we're gonna solder these two ends together. It sounds scary, it sounds dangerous, don't worry, it'll be fine. I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. The first thing that you need to do, you wanna add a little flux to each end. This stuff is just nasty sticky, it's like a pine sap. Don't add too much, but the flux is gonna help etch away the coating on the metal and get to the point to where you can solder it really nicely. I, I forget what these are called, but uh, they're great. They're locking medical clamps. I'm sure somebody will correct me. So what I like to do is this wire will get very hot. Please don't try to hold it with your fingers. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is just, you're gonna have to tin your wire, which means you're just gonna add solder to both ends. So clean your soldering tip, get a little solder on your soldering iron. We have our flux on the wire. I want to make sure you have, have some flux on the wire. That's important. Add some solder to your tip. Heat the wire up. You'll see the flux start to boil. And then add your solder and get a nice little, get a nice little bubble of solder on there. And do the second end. Now we tinned the two ends. So now what we need to do is I'm going to add clean off my tip. I'm going to add some fresh solder and I have my medical clamps here and my helping hands and I'm going to put them next to each other and with my solder I'm going to get it hot enough to melt 
and it seeps on in there. So make sure the wire is hot enough to melt the solder. And then you're going to have to hold that for about 10 seconds. That wire really holds the heat. So you're going to see it, it's going to be tempting to put the plank of wood in this way, but that's not what we're going to do. We want some spring in it. So we're going to flip it this way. Remember, up. That's why we needed to mark it. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is just make sure everything's straight. So I'm going to put this on one of the lines and I'm going to check to see that both ends are even. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tack this down with some hot glue. It's not really holding it structurally, it's just keeping it from moving. So you want to add a little hot glue to both sides and add it over here. And don't worry, if you ever want to use your battery plate as normal later on, you can just use a heat gun to heat the hot glue up and it'll pull right off. So for the wood, you could probably use balsa, but I like basswood. On the other ones, I used the basswood. This one's balsa because I ran out of the basswood. It's nine and a half inches long. Seemed like a good length to get the camera out to where I wanted it, and then the battery uh, back far enough for balance. And then I have a little wedge piece that I cut. This is common for control surfaces for balsa builds. And I'm going to put that up here, and I'm going to set it back a little bit. What that's going to be is where you put the camera. So you're going to put your GoPro here. And you just kind of want to line that up to where you like it. And if you use a super thin CA, you can just hold it in place and then drop some CA on the edge and it seeps right in. We want to add a little Velcro here. It's not to hold the GoPro on. You're not just going to slap that on and go fly. Although it might hold. I don't think that's very stable. That's just to keep it from sliding. So that's there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a Velcro strap and wrap it around. And a lot of people like to do some kind of lens protection or use the case that it came with. It just adds so much weight, I hate doing it. Plus, this thing's been around the block, so I'm not really overly concerned about it. One thing that I wanted to mention is, you know, the, the Velcro uh, padding there does help with the vibrations a little. What we're doing is we're, we're adding the mass of the battery, which is a big portion of the mass of the whole thing, to a separate unit. And that allows this to have more mass to it total. And that way the frame moving around is not going to affect it quite as much. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this through this way, bend it down, bend that one down, and then we're gonna get an idea of where we want this to be, um, depending on how far out you want your camera. Just keep in mind, you need enough room over here to get your battery out this way to be able to offset the camera. So I'm gonna say right about there is where I like it from the front of the camera to the center of the plate is five inches. Now I haven't tested this, but the ones that I did test, they were all different measurements and they, they all worked a little differently. But say we go there, I'm gonna go on here and I'm just gonna mark outside of about, it's about a quarter of an inch either way from the cable is where I'm gonna put my holes. And what these holes are for is the zip ties. So we're going to drill a couple holes and put the zip ties on. All right. And what I'm going to do is I want to make sure the head of the zip tie is on top because we're going to mount the battery on the bottom back here and you don't want that bulky zip tie head getting in the way. We're going to add a little piece of Velcro on the back for the battery. We're going to put the battery here and you would put your battery strap here and wrap that around. And you might want to just add a little bit of hot glue under the battery strap so it doesn't fall off. As you can see, now you have a floating rig. If you want more tension, you separate them. Like that's probably one of the tighter ones that I've done. But you can do less tension just by simply moving in where your holes are. But that right there is, is going to be quite a bit and it's not this much. On these ones, I had the battery sitting on top. The difference is this is easier to load. It's a lot easier to get the battery in there, but you wanna make sure you have balance. You just hold your battery tray in the center and it's perfectly balanced right now. Wow, that's amazing, because I, I just guessed. Okay, so that's the basic rig. We're gonna mount it on the tricopter frame. So we're gonna 
just match it up, find out where our holes are. So, okay, so we're gonna do that. There you go, and you can see. Now it does it does seem to move a lot, but that really helps absorb a lot of the um, vibration and heavy movements. I would like to add some foam in here. There's a couple of options. You can use the Dollar Tree foam board, you know, that we use. You just, uh, you can peel off the paper and you can add a piece here and here. Or there's this great, like a latex foam. And it's, it's really good. And it, any of this will help uh, dampen more of the vibrations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the latex foam and I'm gonna place it here and here. I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue. And that's just so you're not just clamping down real hard on the wires there. Um, and you also don't wanna put a lot of hard force on the wood and end up cracking it or breaking it. Now, depending on if you're building a hex, a quad, a tri or whatever, your, your holes might not line up it directly like this. That's why these added holes are here. So don't be afraid if to get this oriented the way that you want, you might have to do a sc one screw here and one screw here diagonally. That's fine. It'll hold just the same, but that's why they're there. So you can move in 15 degree increments. Now, the nice thing is that wire, the galvanized steel wire only costs about, I don't even know, maybe 30 cents a foot. So uh, less than two feet. Uh, so you're talking at less than a dollar, um, the balsa, everything, really, I mean, that whole isolation rig, the Velcro is probably the most expensive. You probably have less than $5 in that whole isolation camera rig. All right, so now we're done. You got a nice little camera isolation rig. You know, this might work well for some people. Some people might not like how loose that is, but that's fine. You guys can uh, improve upon this, share your ideas with others, you know, help the community improve their builds and what they're doing. For less than five bucks, you can build a camera rig that is great for FPV. If you bought the Anycom, hub or any of the rotor bone series I want to sincerely thank you and uh, even if you didn't you know we have the plans online for free there's a PDF file of the anycopter hub you can download it if you know somebody with a laser cutter get it cut out the idea is that we're all building around a common platform and that way we can share our ideas so I'm excited to see what you guys come up with and uh, I'm gonna get this thing finished so I can go fly it so we'll see you guys later